Hello everyone. Today we will study rational exponents. First of all, let me show you vertical expressions. Let m be a positive integer and assume a to the power of n equal to b. If n is odd or a is passive, if n is odd or a is passive, then we define a equal to the n loop of b. This is called vertical expression. We define a equal to the n root of b. If a to the power of n equal to b, we define a equal to the n root of b. This is this is called logical expression. In this expression, b is called the base, and n is called the index. In this expression here, b is called the base, n is called the index of the logical expression. Note, this notation here is read the n root of b. Next, let me show you some examples. Simplify each of the following expressions. First example, square root of 64. How can we simplify square root of 64? We try to find a number that multiplied by itself equal to 64. The only possibility is a, because number a times a is 64. So we say square root of 64 is a. Next example. The third root of 125. The third root is called a cube root. The second root is called a square root. The third root is called a cube root. Cube root of 125. We are looking for a number that multiplied by itself three times equal to 125. We are looking for a number that multiplied by itself three times equal to 125. The only possibility is number 5. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So we say cube root of 125 is 5. For square root of 64, because a times a equal to 64. So we say square root of 64 is A. Next example. The four root of 81. We're looking for a number that multiplied by itself four times. Four such numbers multiplied together is 81. We know that 3 times 3 is 9. Another 3 times 3 is another 9. 9 times 9 is 81. So we know that 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. That means the fourth of 81 is 3. Next example. The tenth root of 1. The tenth root of 1. The only possibility is that 1 times 1 times 1, 10 times equal to 1. So the tenth root of 1 equal to 1. The 10 root of 1 equal to 1. Next example. The fifth root of negative 32. The fifth root of negative 32. Can we find a number that multiplied by itself 5 times equal to negative 32? The only possibility is negative 2 times itself. If there are 5 negative 2 multiplied together, we get negative 32. So the fifth row of negative 32 is negative 2. Next, the cube root of negative 64. How do we find the cube root of negative 64? We try to find a number such that 3 of such number multiplied together is negative 64. The only possibility here is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Positive 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. So cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. Next example. What's square root of negative 100? 
Can we find a number then multiply by itself equal to negative 100? We know that square root of 100 is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100. How can we get negative 100 here? If we try 10, positive 10 times positive 10 is negative 100. 10 won't work. What about negative 10? Negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100, which is not, which is not negative 100. So see, there's no such numbers. That's undefined. This is not a real number. It's an imaginary number. That's not a real number. That's an imaginary number. So we say it's undefined as a real number. It's undefined as a real number. It's undefined as a real number. This is an imaginary number. It's undefined as a real number. In radical expression, we don't want to involve imaginary number, otherwise it would be too complicated. We only consider real numbers. For radical expression, we only consider real numbers. We don't want to consider complex numbers, otherwise the problem would be too complicated. Next example, the full loop of negative 16. Can we find a number that multiplied by itself four times equal to negative 16? Can we find a number that multiplied by itself four times equal to negative 16? We know that two times itself four times. If there are four twos multiplied together, we get positive 16. But can we get negative 16 here? If we try negative 2, then negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 4 times 4 is 16, which is not negative 16. Since we cannot find such number, we say the full loop of negative 16 is undefined. It's undefined as a real number. This is a complex number. It's undefined as a real number. It's undefined as a real number. The full loop of negative 16 is a complex number, and there are multiple solutions. And to make it simple, to make a problem simple, we only consider real numbers. So this number is undefined as a real number. Next. Square root of 4 over 9. When we have a fraction doing the top and the bottom individually, write as square root of 4 over square root of 9. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So the answer is 2 over 3. Next, cube root of 27 over 125. When we have a radical of a fraction, do the top and the bottom individually. Write it as cube root of 27 over cube root of 125. On the numerator, cube root of 27 is 3. On the denominator, cube root of 125 is 5. That's an answer to cube root of 27 over 125. Next example, the full loop of 16 over 81. When we have a radical of a fraction, do the top and the bottom individually. Write as full loop of 16 over full loop of 81. And we know that the full loop of 16 is 2 because they are when we have four tools multiplied together, we get 16. And the full loop of 81 is 3. Because when we have three, when we have four threes multiplied together, we get 81. So the answer is 2 thirds. Fifth loop of 1 over 32. When we have a radical reflection, do the top and the bottom individually. Write as fifth root of 1 over fifth root of 32. On the numerator, we know that the fifth root of 1 is 1. And the fifth from the bottom, the fifth root of 32 is 2. Because if we have four twos multiplied together, we get 32. Next, square root of negative 1 over 9. Negative 1 over 9 is a, is a negative number. When we have an even root of a negative number that's undefined, even root of a negative number is undefined as a real number. We don't consider any complex number here. We only consider a real number. This is undefined as a real number.
Next, the four rule of negative sixteen, negative eighty one over sixteen. The four rule of negative eighty one over sixteen. That's an even root. That's an even root of a negative number. The even root of a negative number is always undefined. This is not. This is not. It's not a real number. This is. This is complex number. We only consider real number here. So this is undefined as a real number. So keep in mind that we we'll have an even root of a negative number. We we'll have an even root of a negative number. This is always undefined as a real number. The even root of a negative number is always a complex number. It's undefined as a real number. In general, there are more than one solution. If we consider complex numbers, there are more than one solution. To make it simple, we only consider real numbers. So make this undefined as a real number. So when we have an even root of a negative number, we always say this is undefined as a real number. Next, let me introduce rational exponents. What does x to the power of m over n mean? Let me show you step by step. First of all, we define square root of x to be x raised to 1 over 2. Square root is a second root. We define it as x to the power of 1 over 2. And we define cube root of x to be x to the power of 1 over 3. And we define the four root of x to be x to the power of 1 over 4. And similarly, we define the n root of x to be x to the power of 1 over n. Based on this rule here, x to the power of m over n can be rewrite as x to the power of 1 over n times m. It can be rewrite as x to the power of 1 over n times m. In order to match the rule of exponents, in order to match the law of exponents, this expression can be rewrite as x to the power of 1 over n to the power of m. And we know that x to the power of 1 over n is the n root of x to the power of m. So x to the power of m over n can be rewrite as n root of x to the power of m. So the denominator is the index. For rational exponents, the denominator is the index. Numerator is the exponents. So that's the rule. That's the rule for rational exponents. X to the power of m over n is always the same as the n root of x to the power of m. That's how we define rational exponents. That's how we define rational exponents. Note. In general, x to the power of m over n equal to the n root of x to the power of n to the power of m which is the same as the n root of x to the power of m in general it makes no difference if we put m outside or we put m under the root in general it makes no difference but however if x is negative that's a special case. If x is negative and n is even, but when x is negative, when n is even, we know that 
the even row of negative number is undefined. The even row of negative number is undefined. If s is even, if n is even, x is negative. If s is negative, n is even. The even row of negative number is undefined. So if s is negative, n is even. Then x to the power of m over n is undefined. So that's a special case. If x is negative, the denominator is even. If x is negative, n is even. x to the power of m over n is undefined. That's a special case. In general, x to the power of m over n is the same as n of x to the power of m. We can either put m outside, or we can put m, or we can put m under the root. In general, they are the same. However, that's a special case. If x is negative, n is even, then x to the power of m over n is undefined. This is not a real number. This is a complex number. And sometimes there are more than one solutions. Sometimes there are more than one complex solutions. So to make it simple, we say this is undefined as a real number. When s is negative, n is even, this expression is undefined as a real number. Next, let's look at some examples. Simplify each of the following expressions. First example, how do we simplify? 4 to the power of 5 over 2. How do we simplify? 4 to the power of 5 over 2. By the definition here, x to the power of m over n is the n root of x to the power of m. So first of all, draw a vertical. The denominator is the index. The numerator is exponent. The base stays inside. 4 is the base. The base stays inside. And we know that the second root is the square root. Here, square root of 4 is 2. I get 2 to the power of 5. 2 to the power of 5 means there are 5 2's multiplied together, which is 32. Next example. 25 to the power of 3 over 2. 25 to the power of 3 over 2. By the definition of rational exponent, by the definition of rational exponent, 25 to the 3 over 2 can be written as the second root of 25 to the power of 3. The denominator is the index. The numerator is exponent outside. The base stays the same. The second root is the square root. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 to the power of 3 means there are 3 5 multiplied together. 3 5 multiplied multiply together is 125. Next example. 81 to the power of 3 over 4. 81 to the power of 3 over 4. So by the definition of rational exponents, this can be rewrite as the 4 root of 81 to the power of 3. The denominator is the index. The numerator is exponent. The base stays the same. So do the 4 root of 81 first. The 4 root of 81 is 3. And then 3 to the power of 3 is 27. Next example, 125 to the power of 2 thirds. By the definition of rational exponent, this can be rewrite as the third root of 125 to the power of 2. The denominator becomes the index, the numerator becomes exponent, and the base stays the same. Here, cube root of 125 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. 
that's our final answer. Next example. How about a to the power of negative two thirds? How about a to the power of negative two thirds? When the exponent is negative, we put one on the top, make it positive. When the exponent is negative, put one on top and make exponent positive. And then in the denominator, a to the two thirds. By the definition of rational exponent, it can be rewrite as the third root of a squared. The denominator becomes index, numerator becomes exponent. And we know that the cube root of a is 2. 2 squared is 4. The final answer is 1 over 4. Next example, 27 to the negative 4 over 3. 27 to the negative 4 over 3. First of all, when the exponent is negative, put 1 on top, make it positive. When the exponent is negative, put 1 on top, make it positive. Then, from the denominator, 27 to the 4 over 3, by the definition of rational exponent, it can be rewrite as the third root of 27 raised to the power of 4. The denominator becomes the index. The numerator becomes exponent. And we know that the cube root of 27 is 3. 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Next example. 49 to the power of negative 3 half. 49 to the power of negative 3 half. When the exponent is negative, put 1 on top. Make it positive. Next, from the denominator, 49 to the power of 3 over 2, that can be rewrite as the second root of 49 to the power of 3. And we know that the second root is the same as square root. Square root of 49 is 7. 7 to the power of 3 is 343. 7 to the power of 3 means 7 times 7 times 7. That's 343. That's the final answer to this expression. Next example. 16 to the power of negative 5 over 4. 16 to the power of negative 5 over 4. When the exponent is negative, put 1 on top. Make exponent positive. And for 16 to the power of 5 over 4, that can be rewrite as the 4 root of 16 to the power of 5. For the 4 root of 16, we get 2. Then for 2 to the power of 5, we have 5 twos multiplied together. 5 twos multiplied together is 32. So the final answer is 1 over 32. Next example, negative a to the power of 5 over 3. Negative a to the power of 5 over 3. By the definition of rational exponent, this can be rewrite as the third root of negative a to the power of 5. The third root of negative a to the power of 5. The third root of negative a, that's negative 2. Negative 2 to the power of 5 means we have 5 negative 2 multiplied together, which is negative 32. Next example, negative 27 to the power of 4 over 3. Negative 27 to the power of 4 over 3. By the definition of rational exponent, it can be rewrite as the third root of negative 27 to the power of 4. And the third root of negative 27 is negative 3. Negative 3 to the power of 4 means we have 4 negative 3 multiplied together, which is positive 81. Negative number raised to even exponent is always positive. Negative number raised to even power is always positive. 
Next example, negative 32 to the power of 3 over 5. Negative 32 to the power of 3 over 5. It can be rewrite as the free flow of negative 32 to the power of 3. The denominator is the index, the numerator is exponent, and the base stays the same. The free flow of negative 32 is negative 2 because 5 negative 2 multiplied together is negative 32. And then for negative 2 to the power of 3, that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative A. Next example, negative 125 to the power of 2 thirds. Negative 125 to the power of 2 thirds. By the definition of fractional exponent, it can be rewrite as the third rule of negative 125 to the power of 2. And we know that cube root of negative, one, cube root of negative 125 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. Next example. Negative 9 to the power of 3 half. Negative 9 to the power of 3 half. It can be rewrite as second root of negative 9 to the power of 3. Second root of negative 9 to the power of 3. And we know that the even root of a negative number is undefined, that non real number. The even root of a negative number is non is non real number. So that's undefined. That's undefined as a real number. This answer is a complex number. To make it simple, we don't we only consider real numbers. Next example. Ne negative sixty four to the power of four over six. Negative sixty four to the power of four over six. Here, 4 over 6. 4 over 6 can be reduced as 2 over 3. 4 over 6 can be reduced as 2 over 3. So for negative 64 to the power of 2 over 3, that's the third root of negative 64 squared. That's the third root of negative 64 squared. The cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. And we know that negative 4 squared is positive 16. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. That's the final answer to this expression. Next example. Negative 25 to the power of 2 over 4. Negative 25 to the power of 2 over 4. We know that 2 over 4 can be reduced as 1 over 2. Negative 25 to the power of 1 over 2. That's the same as square root of negative 125. That's square root of negative 25. We know that the even, even index even index of a negative number is always undefined. The even root of a negative number is always undefined. This is not a real number. This is a complex number. So consider this is undefined as a real number. This is undefined as a real number. Next. Negative 6 to the power of 4 over 2. Negative 6 to the power of 4 over 2. 4 over 2 can be reduced as 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Negative 6 squared, that means negative 6 times negative 6, which is positive 36. Next example, 9 over 4 to the power of 1 over 2. 9 over 4 to the power of 1 over 2. So when we have fractions, we distribute exponent to the top and the bottom. When we have fractions, distribute exponent to the top and the bottom. We get 9 to a half over 4 to a half. And we know that 9 to a half is square root of 9.
on the button 4 to a half, scroll row 4. Scroll row 9 is 3. Scroll row 4 is 2. That's the final answer to this expression. Next example. 27 over 125 to the power of 2 thirds. 27 over 125 to the power of 2 thirds. So we can dish the exponent to both the numerator and denominator. When we have fractions inside parentheses, dish the exponent to both the numerator and denominator. We get 27 to the power of 2 thirds over 125 to the power of 2 thirds. In the numerator, 27 to the power of 2 thirds. That's the third root of 27. Square. In the denominator, 125 to the power of 2 thirds. That's the third root of 125. Square. In the numerator, the cube root of 27 is 3. 3 square is 9. In the denominator, cube root of 125 is, is, is 5. Cube root of 125 is 5. 5 square is 25. So the final answer is 9 over 25. Next example. 16 over 81 to the power of 5 over 4. When we have exponent outside fraction, distribute exponent to both the top and the bottom, and get 16 to the power of 5 over 4. over 81 to the power of 5 over 4. In the numerator, 16 to the power of 5 over 4 can be rewrite as 4 root of 16 to the power of 5. In the denominator, 81 to the power of 5 over 4 can be rewrite as 4 root of 81 to the power of 5. And in the numerator, 4 root of 16 is 2. 2 to the power of 5 means there are 5 twos multiplied together, which is 32. In the denominator, 4 root of 81 is 3. So you get 3 to the power of 5. 3 to the power of 5 means there are 5 threes multiplied together. When we have 5 threes multiplied together, we get 243. So that's the final answer to this expression. Next example. 25 over 9 to the power of 3 over 2. 25 over 9 to the power of 3 over 2. When we have, when we have exponent outside of fraction, this should be exponent to both the top and the bottom. I get second root of 25 to the power of 3. First of all, I get 25 to the power of 3 over 2 on the top, 9 to the power of 3 over 2 on the bottom. And then 25 to the power of 3 over 2 can be written as the second root of 25 to the power of 3. In the denominator, 9 to the power of 3 over 2 can be rewrite as the second root of 9 to the power of 3. The second root of 25 means the, it's the same as square root of 25, which is 5. 5 to the power of 3 is 125. In the denominator, the second root of 9 is the same as square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 to the power of 3 is 27. That's the final answer to this expression. Next example. 2 to the power of 5 over 2. By the definition of natural exponent, this can be rewrite as the second root of 2 to the power of 5. The denominator is the index, numerator is exponent, and the base stays the same. But what's square root of 2 here? Square root of 2 cannot be reduced any further. So if we run an answer in this form, we can't go any further. If we run an answer in this form, we can't go any further. So let's go back. For 2 to the power of 5 over 2, since square root of 2 cannot be simplified, 
Let's think of this way. For the exponent, 5 over 2, that's the same as 5 divided by 2. 5 divided by 2. 2 goes into 5 2 times. 2 times 2 is 4. Remainder is 1. So that means the exponent 5 over 2 can be rewrite as 2 and a half. 2 and 1 over 2. 5 over 2 can be written as 2 and a half. This 2 is the whole number in the front. And the quotient 2 is the whole number in the front. This 1 is the remainder. And this 2 is the divisor. This 2 is the same denominator as the divisor. So 5 over 2 is the same as 2 and a half. Here, the exponent 5 over 2 is the same as 2 and a half. 2 and a half is 2 plus a half. 2 and a half is 2 plus a half. Then, by the, of, by the law of exponents, this can be rewrite as 2 squared times 2 to the power of half. 2 squared times 2 to the power of half. By the law of exponents, we know that x to the power of n times x to the power of m is the same as x to the power of m plus m. So x to the power of n times x to the power of m, that's the same as x to the power of m plus m. And then conversely, when we have addition and exponent, we can write it as x to the power of n times x to the power of m. By the same rule here, we have 2 to the power of 2 plus a half. That's the same as 2 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of half. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of half, that's square root of 2. That's the final answer for this expression. Next example, 3 to the power of 11 over 4. If we apply rule of exponents, if we apply the definition of rational exponents, this is the 4 root of 3 to the power of 11. By the definition of rational exponent, 3 to the power of 11 over 4 can be rewrite as the 4 root of 3 to the power of 11. The denominator is an index, numerator is exponent, and the base stays the same. However, for the 4 root of 3, we can't go any further. We cannot simplify the 4 root of 3. So let's go back. Simplify the exponent first. Let's go back. Simplify the exponent first. The exponent 11 over 3. How can we simplify 11 over 3? So exponent is 11 over 4. How can we simplify 11 over 4? 11 over 4 is the same as 11 divided by 4. 4 goes, goes into 11 2 times, and 2 times 4 is 8. The remainder is 3. So 11 over 4 can be rewrite as 2 and 3 over 4. 11 over 4 can be rewrite as 2 and 3 over 4. This 2 is the quotient. The whole number 2 is the quotient. 3 is the, is the remainder. 4 is the same is the de denominator here. It's this divisor. It's the same, which is the same denominator here. So 11 over 4 is 2 and 3, 4. 11 over 4 is the same as 2 and 3, 4. So keep the base the same. 11 over 4 is 2 and 3, 4. 2 and 3, 4 is the same as 2 plus 3, 4. Then, by the law of exponents, this can be rewrite as 3 to the power 2 times 3 to the power of 3 over 4. Three to the power of two is is nine. Three to the power of three over four, that's the four root of three to the power of three. If I keep exponent outside, I can't go any further. So here I bring three inside. I bring exponent inside. I bring power three inside. 
if I keep power 3 outside, I can't go any further. I cannot simplify any further. So here I must put 3 here. Then 3 to the power of 3 is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So the final answer is 9 times 4 of 27. That's the final answer for this expression. Next example, 5 to the power of 14 over 3. 5 to the power of 14 over 3. If we apply definition of rational exponent, that's the third root of 5 to the power of 14. However, we cannot simplify the third root of 5. Third root of 5 cannot be simplified. And the cube root of 5 cannot be simplified. So we must go back. Simplify the exponent first. Exponent is 14 over 3. 14 over 3 is the same as 14 divided by 3. And we know that 3 goes into 14 4 times. 4 times 3 is 12. The remainder is 2. So 14 over 3 can be rewrite as 4 and 2 thirds. This whole number 4 is a quotient. This 2 is a remainder. 3 is the same denominator here. So 14 over 3 is 4 and 2 thirds. 14 over 3 is 4 and 2 thirds. 4 and 2 thirds is the same as 4 plus 2 thirds. Then, by the law of exponents, by the law of exponents, this expression can be written as 5 to the power of 4 times 5 to the power of 2 thirds. 5 to the power of 4, that means 5 times 5, there are 4 5, 4 5 multiplied together. 4 5 multiplied together is 6 25. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. If there are 4 5 multiplied together, I get 6 25. Times 5 to the power of 2 thirds. By the definition of rational exponent, 5 to the power of 2 thirds is the third root of 5 to the power of 2. But since we cannot simplify the third root of 5, I put the power of 2 here. Since we cannot simplify third root of power of 5, instead of putting exponent outside, I put exponent here. Then 625 stays the same. Under the root, 5 squared is 25. So the simplified answer is 625 times Q root of 25. That's the simplified answer. That's the simplified answer for this expression. Next example, a to the power of 7 over 2. a to the power of 7 over 2. Again, for a to the power of 7 over 2, by the definition of rational exponent, that's, that's the second root of a to the power of 7. However, second root of a we cannot simplify this, this is not a whole number. Second rule of A is not a whole number. So let's try to go back. Simplify the exponent first, and then simplify further. Since square root of A is not a whole number, let's go back. Simplify the exponent first, and then continue from here. Seven divided by two. Seven over two is the same as seven divided by two. We know that two goes into seven three times. Three times two is six. The remainder is one. So seven over two can be rewrite as three and a half. This three is a quotient. One is a remainder. Two is a standard denominator. So seven over two is the same as three and a half. Three and a half is the same as 3 plus a half. So by the law of exponent, a to the power of 3 plus half is the same as a to the power of 3 times a to the power of a half. a to the power of 3 is a times a times a. a times a is 64. 64 times a is 512. Times a to a, a, to a half. A to the power of half is square root of A. Now, be very, very careful, we are not done. Square root of A can be reduced further. 
Scroll of A can be reduced further. Square root of A can be written as square root of 4 times square root of 2. And square root of 4 is 2. So square root of A is the same as 2 square root of 2. You get 5 12 times 2 square root of 2. Then multiply the whole numbers outside the loop. 5 12 times 2 is 1024 times square root of 2. So the final answer is 1024 times square root of 2. That's the final answer to this expression. Next example, square root of a times cube root of a. How can we multiply two radicals? In order to, in order to multiply both radicals, write both of them in exponential form first. Square root of a can be written as a raised to a half. Cube root of a can be written as a raised to the power of a third. Then, when we multiply a to a half and a to a third, they have the same base. We add an exponent. Take a half plus a third. So keep in the base. Take a half plus a third. For a half plus a third, we first of all find common denominator. For 2 and 3, the common multiple of a denominator is 6. In order to make 2 to be 6, I multiply 2 by 3. So here I multiply top and bottom by 3, I get 3 over 6. In order to make 3 to be 6, I multiply 3 by 2, and then multiply the same thing from the top and the bottom, I get 2 over 6. Then 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6 is 5 over 6. So the final answer, keep the base and exponent, I get 5 over 6. That's the final answer in the same point form. Next, b times the full root of b cube. In order to multiply this radical to b, I first of all rewrite the radical in exponential form. b by itself is b to the power of 1. The full root of b, to the, the root of b cube is b to the power of 3 over 4. The exponent is a numerator. The index is the denominator. Exponent is always the numerator, and the index is always the denominator. Then, when we multiply b to the power 1 to b to the 3 over 4, they have the same base. We keep the base, and then add exponent. 1 plus 3 over 4. For 1 plus 3 over 4, we first of all rewrite 1 as 1 over 1. Then next, find the common denominator for 1 and 4. The common multiple of 1 and 4 is 4. In order to make 1 to be 4, I need to multiply 1 by 4. So for the first fraction, I multiply top and bottom by 4. I get 4 over 4. For the second fraction, it already has 4 on the bottom, so I keep the top in the same. So I get 4 over 4 plus 3 over 4, which is 7 over 4. So. 1 plus 3 over 4 is 7 over 4. That's the final answer in the simple form. Next, c squared times square root of c. So first of all, we write a radical in exponential form. Radical c is c raised to a half. Then when we multiply c squared to c to a half, we keep the common base. They have the same base, keep the common base, and exponents. Take 2 plus a half. I first of all rewrite 2 as 2 over 1. Then find their common denominator. For 1 and 2, the least common multiple is 2. In order to make 1 to be 2, I need to multiply 1 by 2. So for the first fraction, I multiply top and bottom by 2. I get 4 over 2. For the second fraction, we already have 1, 2 on the bottom. So I keep the top in the same. I get 4 over 2 plus 1 over 2, which is 5 over 2. So 
So 2 plus 1 over 2 is 5 over 2. The final answer is c to the power of 5 over 2. Next. Cube root of d times square root of d. Cube root of d times square root of d. So if there are multiple roots, do the inner root, simplify the inner root first. What's outside? Cube root is power of 1 over 3. And under the cube root, d by itself is d to the power of 1. Square root of d is d to the power of a half. In general, do the inside, do the inside of the parentheses first. We multiply d to the power of 1 to d to a half. And they have, they have the same base. So keep the base and exponent. 1 plus a half, what do we get? 1 plus a half. I remember 1 is 1 over 1. Next, find the least common multiple for, for 1 and 2, which is 2. In order to make 1 to be 2, I need to multiply 1 by 2. Then multiply the same thing to the top and the bottom. I get 2 over 2. For the second version, we already have one, 2 on the bottom, so keep the top and the same. 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2 is 3 over 2. So keep d, the common base d here, and exponent. 1 plus 1 over 2 is 3 over 2. To the power of 1 over 3. Now here we have d to the power of 3 over 2 to the power of 1 third. The rule of, of exponent says x to the power of n raised to the power of m. That's the thing as x to the power of n times m. That's the rule of exponent. It says x to the power of n raised to the power of m. That's x to the power of n times m. So here I multiply the exponent. When we have, when we have d raised to 3 over 2 raised to a third, we multiply the exponent. Keep d as a, as a, dynamic, as a base. Multiply exponent. Take 3 over 2 times 1 over 3. What do we get? 3 over 2 times 1 over 3. I can cancel 3 from top and bottom. When we multiply, I can cancel 3 from top and bottom. What's left is 1 over 2. So if I multiply exponent, what's left is d to the power of 1 over 2. And that's an answer in a simple form. Next example, square root of x over the full root of x. Square root of x over the full root of x. In order to divide two radicals, I first of all rewrite both of them in exponential form. Square root of x is x raised to a half. Fourth rule of x, the fourth rule of x is x raised to a quarter. And when we divide x to a half divided by x to a quarter, we subtract exponent. When we divide x to the power of n over x to the power of m, when we divide, we keep the common base and then subtract exponent. So here, keep the common base x so turn exponent, take 1 half minus 1 over 4. 1 half minus 1 over 4, when we subtract. First of all, find a common multiple, which is 4. In order to make 2 to be 4, I need to multiply 2 by 2. And then multiply top and bottom by 2, I get 2 over 4. For the second fraction, we already have 4 on the bottom, so keep the top, the top the same. 2 over 4 minus 1 over 4 is 1 over 4. So I get x to the power of 1 over 4. That's the final answer in the simplest form. Next example, y to the power of 5. 
over cube root of y y to the power of 5 over cube root of y how can we simplify this expression? so first of all, in order to divide radicals we write a radical in exponential form I get y to the power of 5 over y to the power of a third then when we divide y to the power of 5 by y to the power of 1 third we subtract the exponent, keep the common base subtract the exponent take 5 minus 1 third for 5 minus 1 third we first of all rewrite 5 as 5 over 1 then find the common multiple of, of the denominator for 1 and 3, the common multiple is 3 in order to make 1 to be 3 I need to multiply 1 by 3 so here, from the first fraction, I multiply top and bottom by 3 I get 15 over 3 For the second fraction, we already have 3 on the bottom so I'm keeping the top the same 15 over 3 minus 1 over, minus 1 over 3 is 14 over 3 So here, 5 minus 1 over 3 is 14 over 3 That's the final answer in a simple form Let's example z times square root of z over cube root of z square z times square root of z over cube root of z square In order to multiply or divide radicals, we write all radicals in exponential form first So here, square root of z by itself is z to the power of 1 Square root of z can be written as z to the power of 1 over 2. On the bottom, cube root of z squared is z to the power of 2 over 3. The index is a denominator, exponent is a numerator. Then, when we multiply, we add exponent. When we divide, we subtract exponent by the law of exponents when we multiply z to the power of 1 times z to the half we add exponent I get 1 plus a half and then when we divide by z to the 3 over 2 2 over 3 we subtract exponent so I get 1 plus a half minus 2, two over 3 1 plus a half minus 2 over 3 I first bold with 1 is 1 over 1 Next, find the least common multiple for 1, 2, and 3 which is 6 In order to make 1 to be 6 I, multiply, I need to multiply 1 by 6 So multiply both top and bottom by 6 I get 6 over 6 For the second fraction In order to make 2 to be 6 I need to multiply 2 by 3 so here, multiply top and bottom by 3, I get 3 over 6 For the third fraction, in order to make 3 to be 6, I need to multiply 3, I need to multiply 3 by 2 So multiply 2 to both top and bottom, I get 4 over 6 Then, add and subtract Denominator is the same, I leave it the same For the numerator, I do 6 plus 3 minus 4 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 minus 4 is 5 I get 5 over 6 so 1 plus half minus 2 thirds is 5 over 6 that's the final answer in the simplest form next the for loop of w over cube root of w the for loop of W over cube root of W. So let's simplify what's inside first. From the outside, the fourth root is the power of 1 over 4. From the inside here, W by itself is W to the power of 1. Cube root of W is W to the power of 1 over 3. In general, let's simplify what's inside first. For the inside, when we divide w to the power of 1 by w to the third they have, same, they have the same base, they have the same base so keep the base, subtract the exponent keep the base, subtract the exponent 1 minus the third, what do we get? 
for 1 minus a third, which first of all, we write 1 as 1 over 1. Then find the least common multiple. For 1 is 3, the least common multiple is 3. In order, to, in order to make 1 to be 3, I need to multiply 1 by 3. So multiply 3 to both top and the bottom, I get 3 over 3. For the second fraction, leave it the same, since you already have 3 on the bottom, leave it the same. So I get 3 over 3 minus 1 over 3, which is 2 over 3. So 1 minus a third is 2 third. Keep in the base, 1 minus a third is 2 third. Then 2 to the power of 1 over 4. When we have w to the power of 2 third to the power of 1 over 4, we keep the, keep in the base and then multiply the exponent. Take 2 third times 1 over 4. Take 2 third times 1 over 4. 2 third times 1 over 4. If we, mul if we multiply, I get 2 over 12. And then 2 over 12 can be reduced as 1 over 6. So if I multiply 2 over 3 times 1 over 4, I get 1, and 1 over 6. That's the final answer in a simple is full. Next example. The free flow of a to the power of 12. How can we simplify this radical? First of all, we can rewrite this vertical expression as a to the power of 12 over 5. The index is always a denominator. Exponent is a numerator. Then, if the exponent is an improper fraction, let's first of all write it as a mixed number first. Do long division, write it as a mixed number. Take 12 divided by 5. 5 goes to 12 two times. 2 times 5 is 10. Remainder is 2. That means 12 over 5 can be rewritten as 2 and 2 over 5. The first 2 is the quotient. The second 2 is a remainder. And the denominator stays the same. So 12 over 5 is the same as 2 and 2 fifth. 2 and 2 fifth is the same as 2 plus 2 fifth. And then by the law of exponent, we know that x to the power of n times x to the power of m is always x to the power of n plus m. And on the other way, when we have x to the power of n plus m, I can write it as x to the power of n times x to the power of m. I the same rule here. I get a to the power of 2 times a to the power of 2 fifth. For a to the power of 2, I leave in the way it is. For a to the power of 2 fifth, I can write it as the free flow of a squared. For a to the power of 2 fifth, I can write it as the free flow of a to the power of 2. The denominator becomes the index. Numerator is exponent. That's the answer in the simplest form. Next example. The full loop of a to the power of 7 times b to the power of 10. The full loop of a to the power of 7 times b to the power of 10. If there are two different variables, I first of all separate the radicals. What is this? Full loop of a to the power of 7 times the full loop of b to the power of 10. When there are two different variables, I first of all separate, separate the radical, write it as the full loop of a to the power of 7 times the full loop of b to the power of 7, b to the power of 10. And then we know that full loop of a to the power of 7, if I write it in exponential form, that's a to the power of 7 over 4. Exponent is a numerator, index is a denominator. The full loop of b to the power of 10 can be written as 10 over 4. Exponent is a numerator, index is a denominator. Now, simplify each of them individually. For 
a to the power of 7 over 4. I can first of all rewrite 7 over 4 as a mixed number. 7 divided by 4, quotient is 1. Remainder is 3, so I get 1 plus 3 over 4. It can be rewrite as a to the power of 1 times a to the power of 3 over 4. a to the power of 1 is a. a to the power of 3 over 4. That's the for loop of a cube. That's the for loop of a cube. The numerator is exponent. Denominator is the index. So a to the power of 7 over 4 can be written as a times the for loop of a cube. That's the first term in the simplest form. Now for the second term in the simplest form, I have b to the power of 10 over 4. Here, since 10 over 4 is an improper fraction, I can first of all write it as a mixed number. 10 over 4 can be written as, can be written as 2 and 2 over 4. 10 over 4, just in long division, it can be written as 2 and 2 over 4. Then, by, of, by the law of exponents, this can be rewrite, rewrite as b to the power of 2 times b to the power of 2 over 4, which is b squared times the four of b squared. b squared is the same. For b to the power of 2 over 4, the denominator is the index, numerator is exponent. So b to the power of 10 over 4 can be written as b squared times the for loop of b squared. Then for the final answer in the simplest form, we multiply what's alpha and the radical together. So you get a times b squared. We first of all multiply what's outside the radical. Get a times b squared. Then multiply what's under the radical together. What's under the radical? We have a to the power of 3 times b to the power of 2. What's under the radical is a to the power of 3 times b to the power of 2. That's the final answer in a simplest form. That's the final answer in a simplest form. Next example. Cube root of 40a times a to the power of a times b to the power of 4. Simplify. Cube root of 40a times a to the power of a times b to the power of 4. If there's a number in the front, factor this number first. Factor 40a first. How can we factor 40a? Try to factor 40a completely. 40a can be factored as a times 6. a can be factored as 4 times 2. 4 can be factored as 2 times 2. And this number 2 is a prime. We, have, we can't go any further. 6 can be factored as 2 times 3. Now, count, this, no, no, those numbers cannot be break down anymore. Now look at the end of the branch. Look at the end of the branch. We have number 2 4 times. Number 3 1 times. So 48 equal to 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 1. 48 can be factored as 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 1. So first step, factor 48. I get 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 1. a to the power of a stays the same. b to the power of 4 stays the same. Next, Separate each factor. I get cube root of 2 to the power of 4 times cube root of 3 
to the power of 1. times cube root of a to the power of a times cube root of b to the power of 4 then simplify each of them individually simplify each of them individually first term 2 to the power of 3 over 4 if an exponent is more than an index I write it as 2 to the power of 4 over 3. I write it as 2 to the power of 4 over 3. Since this is an improper fraction here, 2 to the power of 4 over 3. It can be written as 2 to the power of 1 plus the third. If I write 4 over 3 as a mixed number, that's 1 and a third. 1 and a third is the same as 1 plus 1 third. Then, by the law of exponent, this can be rewrite as 2 to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 1 times 2 to the power of 1 third. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 1 third is cube root of 2. So, 2 to the power of 4 third can be written as 2 times cube root of 2. 2 to the power of 4 third can be written as 2 times cube root of 2. For the second number, cube root of 3 to the power of 1. If an exponent is less than an index, leave it the way it is, don't change anything. If an exponent is less than an index, Leave it the way it is. Don't make any change. If an exponent is less than an index, leave it the way it is. Don't make any change. Next. Cube root of, cube root of a to the power of a. This can be rewrite as a to the power of a over 3. Exponent is a numerator. Index is a denominator. Then reduce this number a to the power of a over 3. When exponent is a mixed number, when, when exponent is an improper, infra, improper fraction, write it as a mixed number first. When exponent is an improper fraction, write it as a mixed number first. For a over 3, if I write it as a mixed number, that's 2 and 2 thirds. 2 and 2 thirds is the same as 2 plus 2 over 3. Then, by the law of exponent, this expression can be written as a to the power of 2 times a to the power of 2 third. a to the power of 2 is a squared, that stays the same. a to the power of 2 third, that's cube root of a squared. Numerator is exponent, denominator is index. So a to the power of a over 3 can be written as a square times cube root of a square next cube root of b to the power of 4 can be written as b to the power of 4 over 3 let's simplify b to the power of 4 over 3 b to the power of 4 over 3, that's an, improper, that's an improper fraction. I can write 4 over 3 as 1 plus a third. 4 over 3 is the same as 1 and a third. 1 and a third is the same as 1 plus 1 third. Then, by the rule of exponent, this expression can be written as b to the power of 1 times b to the power of 1 third. Then, b to the power of 1 is the same as b. b to the power of 1 third. That's cube root of b. The denominator is index. Numerator is exponent. If an exponent is 1, usually you don't write 1. So b to the power of 4 over 3 can be written as b times 
Kill the roof beat. Now, for the final answer, for the final answer, multiply what's outside outside radical together. Multiply what's outside the radical together. What's outside the radical? We have two, a squared and b. What's outside the radical? We have two, a squared and b. And then multiply what's under the radical together. What's under the radical? We have two times three, which is six. A squared times B. That's the final answer in a simple form. For the final answer, we multiply what's outside radical together. What's outside radical with two A squared and B. Two A squared B. And then multiply what's under radical together. What's under radical? What's under radical? We have two. We have 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And then we have a squared and b. That's the final answer in the simplest form. Next example. Cube root of 1 c c 2 times a to the power of 10 times b to the power of a. Under a radical, if there's a coefficient in front of the variables, let's factor this coefficient first. How can we factor 1 c c 2 1 c c 2 it can be factored as 2 times 81 81 can be factored as 9 times 9 9 can be break down as 3 times 3 same thing for the other 9 3 times 3 3 cannot be break down anymore 2 cannot be break down anymore and the end of the branches we have 2 to the power of 1 3 to the power of 4. We have number 2 one time. We have number 3 four times. And that's 2 to the power of 1 times 3 to the power of 4. That's how we factor 1 cc2. So here, 1 cc2 can be factored as 2 to the power of 1 times 3 to the power of 4. A to the power of 10 stays the same. B to the power of A stays the same. Next, separate it. This expression can be written as cube root of 2 times cube root of 3 to the power of 4 times cube root of A to the power of 10 times cube root of B to the power of a, then simplify each of them individually. For the first factor here, for number two, if the exponent is less than the index, we leave it the way it is, don't make any change. If the exponent is less than the index, leave it the way it is, don't make any change. If the exponent is less than the index, leave it the way it is. Don't make any change. For the second expression, cube root of 3 to the power of 4. If the index is if the exponent is more than the index, I first of all write it as exponent, write it in exponential form. 3 to the power of 4 over 3. Exponent is a numerator, index is a denominator. Then reduce 3 to the power of 4 over 3. Four over three is the improper fraction. It can be written as one and a third. One and a third is the same as one plus one third. Then, by the law of exponents, three to the power of one plus one third can be written as three to the power of one times three to the power of one third. Three to the power of one is the same as number three. Three to the power of one third, that's cube root of three. Denominator is the index. Numerator is exponent. If power is 1, we don't write 1. If the power is 1, we don't write 1. So, 3 to the power of 4 third can be written as 3 times the cube root of 3.
next cube root of a to the power of 10. Cube root of a to the power of 10. If I write the exponential form, that's a to the power of 10 over 3. Then simplify this. a to the power of 10 over 3. 10 over 3, we can first of all write it as a mixed number. 10 over 3 is 3 and a third. That can be done as 3 plus 1 over 3. Then by the law of, by the law of exponents, 3, a to the power of 3 plus 1 third is a to the power of 3 times a to the power of 1 third. a to the power of 3, I leave you know it is. For a to the power of 1 third, I write it as cube root of a to the power of 1. The numerator is exponent. If exponent is 1, I don't write 1. Denominator is index. The index is 3. So a to the power of 10 third can be written as a to the power of 3 times cube root of a. Next, cube root of b to the power of a. It can be rewrite as b to the power of a over 3. Exponent is a numerator. Index is a denominator. Simplify b to the power of a over 3. a over 3 is an improper fraction. It can be rewrite as 2 and 2 third. So I get b to the power of 2 plus 2 third. Then by the law of exponents, it can be written as b squared times b to the power of 2 third. That's b squared times cube root of b squared. Numerator is an exponent. Denominator is an index. That's how they write b to the power of 2 third. So here, b to the power of a third can be rewrite as b squared times cube root of b squared. Then, for the final answer, multiply what's outside the root first. What's outside the radical, we have 3 a cube and b squared. What's outside the radical, we have 3 a cube and b squared. What's under the radical? We have cube root of 2 times 3 is 6. This 2 and this 3, they are both under the radical. 2 times 3 is 6. a and b squared. That's the final answer in a simple list form. That's the final answer in a simple list form. Next example. Square root of 72 times x to the power of 4. y to the power of 7. Square root of 72 times x to the power of 4 times y to the power of 7. So if there's a coefficient in front of the variables, Let's factor the coefficient first. Let's factor 72 first. 72, it can be first of all factored as 9 times a. 9 can be factored as 3 times 3. a can be factored as 2 times 4. 2 cannot be break down anymore, but 4 can be break down as 2 times 2. So at the end of the branch, have 2 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power of 2. We have number 2 3 times. We have number 3 2 times. That's how we factor 72. So factor 72, I get 2 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power of 2. x to the power of 4 stays the same y to the power of 7 stays the same. Next, separate factors. I get cube root of square root of 2 to the power of 3.
square root of 3 to the power of 2, square root of s to the power of 4, square root of y to the power of 7, and simplify each factor individually. Here, square root of 2 to the power of 3 can be rewrite as 2 to the power of 3 over 2. If the index is missing, where the index is 2, square root is the same as the second root. So you get 3 over 2. Let's simplify 2 to the power of 3 over 2 first. Or 2 to the power of 3 over 2. 3 over 2 can be rewrite as 1 and a half. 1 and a half is the same as 1 plus a half. Then by the law of exponent, this can be rewrite as 2 to the power of 1 times 2 to the power of a half. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of a half is square root of 2. Denominator is the index. Numerator is exponent. If the index is 2, usually we don't write 2. If the exponent is 1, usually we don't write 1. So 2 to the power of 3 half is 2 times radical 2. That's the first factor. Second factor, we have square root of 3 squared. In exponential form, that's 3 to the power of 2 over 2. If the index is missing, so also index is 2. We get 2 divided by 2. And for 3 to the power of 2 over 2, we know that 2 over 2 is 1. 3 to the power of 1 is 3. So 3 to the power of 2 over 2 can be reduced as 3. Next. Square root of x to the power of 4. Square root of x to the power of 4 can be written as x to the power of 4 over 2. For x to the power of 4 over 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. That's, that's, that's x squared. x squared cannot be reduced any further, so I leave in the way it is. So x to the power of 4 over 2 is x squared. Last factor. Square root of y to the power of 7. If I put it in exponential form, that's y to the power of 7 over 2. And for y to the power of 7 over 2, 7 over 2 is an improper fraction. If I write it as a mixed number, that's 3 and a half. So 7 over 2 is the same as 3 and a half. 3 and a half is 3 plus a half. Then by the rule of exponents, this can be rewrite as y to the power of 3 times y to the power of a half. y to the power of 3, that's a whole number, I leave it the same. And for y to the power of a half, I write it as square root of y. Denominator is an index. Numerator is exponent. If the index is 2, we don't write 2. If exponent is 1, we don't write 1. So we get y cubed times square root of y. Then, for the final answer, we multiply what's outside radical together. What's outside radical with 2, 3, s squared, y cubed. 2 times 3 is 6, s squared, y cubed. That's what's outside radical. What's under radical with 2 and y. Put them together. Radical, 2, y. That's the final answer in the simplest form. Next example, how can we simplify the for loop of 32 times x to the power of 10 times y to the power of 14? The for loop of 32 times x to the power of 10 times y to the power of 14. First of all, if there's a coefficient in front of a variable, factor the coefficient first. How can we factor 32? 32 can be factored as 4 times a. 
4 can be factored as 2 times 2. A can be factored as 2 times 4. And 4 can be factored as 2 times 2. At the end of a branch, we have number 2 5 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 32 can be factored as 2 to the power of 5. Here, 32 can be factored as 2 to the power of 5. That's the full rule of 2 to the power of 5 times x to the power of 10, y to the power of 14. Next, separate, separate each factors. I get the full rule of 2 to the power of 5 times the full rule of x to the power of 10 times the full rule of y to the power of 14. Then simplify each of them individually. The full rule of 2 to the power of 5 that can be written as 2 to the power of 5 over 4. Exponent is a numerator. Index is a denominator. Next, let's simplify. 2 to the power of 5 over 4. Five over four is an improper fraction, so I can first of all write it as a mixed number. Five over four is the same as one plus one over four. One and a quarter. Five over four is the same as one and a quarter. So it's two to the power of one plus a quarter. Then, by the law of exponents, this can be rewritten as two to the power of one times two to the power of one over four. Two to the power of one is two. And 2 to the power of 1 over 4 is the full rule of 2. Denominator is index. Numerator is exponent. If the exponent is 1, we don't write 1. So that's 2 times the full rule of 2. So 2 to the power of 5 over 4 is 2 times the full rule of 2. Now, for the full rule of x power of 10, that's x to the power of 10 over 4. The index is a denominator. Exponent is a numerator. Next, reduce x to the power of 10 over 4. 10 over 4 is an improper fraction. Let's first of all write it as a mixed number. 10 over 4 can be written as 2 and 2 over 4. Then, by the law of exponents, x to the power of, x to the power of 2 plus 2 over 4, that's x squared times x to the power of 2 over 4. Here I leave x squared the same. For x to the power of 2 over 4, I write it as full rule of x squared. Denominator becomes index. Numerator is exponent. So I get x squared times full rule of x squared. Next, last factor. Full rule of y to the power of 14. And that can be written as y to the power of 14 over 4. y to the power of 14 over 4. Here, 14 over 4 is a mixed number. It's an improper fraction. Let's first follow it as a mixed number. 14 over 4 can be written as 3 and 2, and 2 over 4. 14 over 4 can be written as 3 and 2 over 4. Then, by the law of exponents, this can be rewritten as y to the power of 3 times y to the power of 2 over 4. For y to the power of 3, I leave it in the same. And for y to the power of 2 over 4, I write it as full rule of y squared. Denominator is index, numerator is exponent. So, y to the power of 14 over 4 can be rewritten as y cube times the full rule of y square and then for the final answer we multiply what's outside the radical together what's outside the radical we have 2 s square y cube what's under the radical we have the full rule of 2 
x square y square what's under the decal we have 2 x square y square that's the final answer in the simplest form that's the final answer in the simplest form next next example how can we simplify a to the power of a half times b to the power of a third raised to the power of a if there's exponent outside the parentheses we can distribute exponent first when we teach the exponent, we multiply the exponents. The rule is x to the power of n times y to the power of m raised to the power of a. I can teach you a to both of them. I get x to the a n times y to the power of a n. Teach the outer exponent to both of the inner exponent. I get x to the power of an times y to the power of an. So here, distribute a to both of them. If I distribute a, I get a times half. What's a times half? Half times a. I can first of all rewrite a as a over 1. Then multiply top to the top, bottom to the bottom, I get a over 2. a divided by 2 is 4. So half times a is 4. If I teach the exponent, half times a is 4. If I teach the exponent here, I get b to the power of 1 third times a. For 1 third, times a. I can first of all rewrite a as a over 1. Then multiply top to the top, bottom to the bottom, I get a over 3. a over 3 cannot be reduced. I leave in the way it is. I get b to the power of a over 3. Then try to reduce if possible. a to the power of 4, it cannot be reduced, so I leave in the way it is. For b to the power of a over 3, b to the power of a over 3 I can write it as b to the power of 2 plus 2 third I can rewrite a over 3 as a least number as 2 and 2 third then by the law of, by the law of exponent it can be re rewrite as b squared times b to the power of 2 third I, here I leave b squared in the way it is for b to the power of 2 third, I can write this cube root of b squared. The denominator is an index, numerator is exponent. So I get b squared times cube root of b squared. I leave a to the power of 4 in the same. And for the final answer, multiply what's outside radical together a to the power of 4, b to the power of 2. And then, what's under radical? I leave in the way it is. That's what's under radical. I leave in the way it is. So the final answer is a to the power of 4, b to the power of 2, times cube root of b squared. That's the final answer in a simplest form. Next. a to the power of 3 over 2 b to the power of 2 over 3 raised to the power of 7 over 2 so since we have different variables in the in, inside parentheses they cannot be combined so I distribute an auto exponent first when I distribute I multiply exponents so I get 2 over 3 times 7 over 2 3 over 2 times 7 over 2 3 over 2 times 7 over 2 for 3 over 2 times 7 over 2 we multiply 3 across I get 21 over 4 
then for b we have two thirds when we distribute take two thirds times seven over two two thirds times seven over two i can cancel two from top and the bottom i get seven over three cancel two from top and the bottom i get seven over three so two thirds times seven over two is seven over three Now, next, if both fractions have different denominators, if both fractions have different denominators, try to make common denominator for both of them. Here, try to make common denominator for both of them. So 21 over 4 and 7 over 3. Try to make denominator the same. For 4 and 3, the common denominator is 12. In order to make 4 to be 12, I need to multiply 4 by 3, and then do the same thing to the top. 21 times 3 is 63. For the second fraction, in order to make 3 to be 12, I multiply 3 by 4, then multiply the same thing to the top and the bottom. I get 28 over 12. So, 21 over 4 is the same as 63 over 12. Seven over three is the same as twenty-eight over twelve. Next, reduce both of them individually. Reduce both of them individually. For a to the power of sixty-three over twelve, we first both try to divide sixty-three as a mixed number. We write 63 over 12 as a mixed number. For 63 over 12, 12 goes to 63 5 times. 5 times 12 is 60, remainder is 3. So 63 over 12 can be rewrite as 5 and 3 over 12. 63 over 12 can be rewrite as 5 and 3 over 12. Then, by the law of exponent, it can be rewritten as a to the power of 5 times a to the power of 3 over 12. For a to the power of 5, I can leave in the way it is. For a to the power of 3 over 12, that's the 12 root of a to the power of 3. That's the 12 root of a to the power of 3. So here I get a to the power of 5 times the 12th root of a to the power of 3. Next, reduce b to the power of 28 over 12. First of all, this is an improper version. Write as a mixed number first. For 28 over 12, use long division. 12 goes to 28 2 times. 2 times 12 is 24, remainder is 4. So 28 over 12 can be rewrite as 2 and 4 over 12. 2 is a quotient. Remainder 4. 4 is a remainder. Denominator stays the same. So 28 over 12 can be rewrite as 2 and 4 over 12. Two plus four over twelve. Then, by the law of by the law of exponents, this expression can be rewritten as b to the power of two times b to the power of four over twelve, which is b squared times twelve root of b to the power of four. So the second factor can be rewritten as b squared. 
times the 12th law of b to the power of 4. For the final answer, we put what's outside radical together. We get a to the power of 5 b squared. Put what's outside, what's outside radical together. I get a to the power of 5 times b to the power of 2. And then put what's under radical together. We get a to the power of 3, b to the power of 4. That's the final answer in the simplest form. That's the final answer in the simplest form. Next example. 2 times a to the power of 5 over 2 times b to the power of 4 over 3 to the power of 5 over 2. 2 times a to the power of 5 over 2 times b to the power of 4 over 3 times to the power of 5 over 2. First step, we distribute an outer exponent. We get 2 to the power of 5 over 2 times a to the power of 5 over 2 times 5 over 2. 5 over 2 times 5 over 2 is 25 over 4. times b to the power of 4 over 3 times 5 over 2. 4 over 3 times 5 over 2. We multiply top to the top, bottom to the bottom. We get 10 over 6. So I get 20 over 6. 20 over 6 can be reduced as 10 over 3. Here I get b to the power of 10 over 3. Next, try to find the common denominator for each fraction. 5 over 2, 25 over 4, 10 over 3. Try to find the least common multiple of the denominator. Write all fractions over the same denominator. Write every fraction over the same denominator. Here we have 5 over 2, 25 over 4, 10 over 3. Try to divide every fraction over the same denominator. For 2, 4, and 3, the common denominator is 12. In order to make 2 to be 12, I need to multiply 2 by 6. So I multiply 6 both on the top and the bottom, I get 30 over 12. In order to make 4 to be 12, I need to multiply 4 by 3. So I multiply both top and the bottom by 3, I get 72 over 12, 75 over 12. In order to make 3 to be 12, I need to multiply 3 by 4, and then multiply 4 to the top and the bottom, I get 40 over 12. So, we write all fractions over the same denominator, which is 12. So, 5 over 2 is 30 over 12. 25 over 4 is 75 over 12. 10 over 3 is 40 over 12. Next, reduce each reduce each, each factor individually. For a for 2 to the power of 30 over 12. That's an improper fraction. So I first of all take 30 divided by 12. 30 divided by 12. 12 goes to 30 2 times. 2 times 12 is 24. Remainder is 6. So 30 over 12 can be rewrite as 2 and 6 over 12. Which is which is the same as 2 plus 6 over 12. Then by the law of exponent, it can be written as 2 squared times 2 to the power of 6 over 12. And 2 squared is 4. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the power of 6 over 12 
less than the 12th root of 2 to the power of 6. The numerator is exponent. Denominator is an index, so that's the 12th root of 2 to the power of 6. So first factor is 4 times the 12th root of 2 to the power of 6. Next, simplify the second factor. a to the power of 75 over 12. 75 over 12, that's the imp improper fraction. Let's write it as a mixed number first. So 75 divided by 12. 12 goes to 75, 6 times. 6 times 12 is 72, remainder is 3. So 75 over 12 can be written as 6 times 6 and 3 over 12. 75 over 12 can be written as 6 and 3 over 12. 6 and 3 over 12 is the same as 6 plus 3 over 12. Then, by the law of exponent, this can be a to the power of 6 plus 12, 3 over 12 can be written as a to the power of 6 times a to the power of 3 over 12. 8 to the power of 6 I leave in the same. For a to the power of 3 over 12, I write it as the 12th root of a to the power of 3. So a to the power of 75 over 12 can be written as a to the power of 6 times the 12th root of a to the power of 3. That's the second factor. Then for the third factor, On the third factor, b to the power of 40 over 12. For b to the power of 40 over 12, that's an improper fraction. I first will take 40 divided by 12. Twelve goes into 40 three times. 3 times 12 is 36, remainder is 4. So 40 over 12 can be rewrite as 3 and 4 over 12, which is the same as 3 plus 4 over 12. So we have b to the power of 3 plus 4 over 12. That can be rewrite, rewrite as b to the power of 3 times b to the power of 4 over 12. For b to the power of 3, I leave it in the same. And for b to the power of 4 over 12, I can write it as the 12th root of b to the power of 4. I get b to the power of 3 times 12th root of b to the power of 4. Then, for the final answer, we multiply what's alpha and radical together. What's alpha and radical with 4? a to the power of 6, b to the power of 3, that was alpha and radical. What's under radical? We have 2 to the power of 6. 2 to the power of 6, that means we have 6 twos multiplied together, that's 64. 2 to the power of 6 means we have 6 twos multiplied together, I get 64 and a to the power of 3, b to the power of 4. That's the final answer in the simplest form. That's the final answer in the simplest form.